Hello and welcome everybody to more Pokemon Fire and Nuzlocke. Yes, it is still Pokemon Grind Nuzlocke Edition. We are still here in the same spot. I know, very exciting. <laughs> you know, I could just do this and go on my bike and just annoy everyone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are still, I'm still live on Twitch. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube, well, uh, I'm probably not live. <laughs> or I might be live. I might be live playing something else. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that this session is going to be the last grind. I'm hoping this session will be the last grind. And then we'll be ready. I hope so. Because, like, I already spent two hours. I mean, like, if it's going to take me another two hours, then I expect to be done. <laughs> you know. Uh, also, hello, Footloose in the chat. Not the first one today. Whoop. I, I keep forgetting it. Didn't finish it off. I'm no surprised. Oh well. It's fine. I'm not worried. So we're still trying to level up Sparks at the moment. And Ben to be fair. Ben needs to be at least level 60. Uh, but that's all we're doing once again. So once again, you, in time you got any questions guys. If you're watching you got any questions or anything you want to say or whatnot. Um, anything you want to talk about let me know. Because this, this is the time. Um, but I do, I do actually have something in relation, not relation to Pokemon though, um, in terms of general conversation, so be wary, I will be talking about, well, uh, to be fair, we always talk about things not necessarily related to the game that we're playing, um, we ain't like, you know, professional all the time. I think like maybe the most, arguably, I say professional, but the, I feel like the game I've talked on topic most of the time is probably Dragon Quest, like the one on Let's Play right now, Dragon Quest, I think I've kept on topic on that, like 90% of the time. 90% of the time. With the odd occasion of referencing Dragon Ball, because, you know, Akira Toriyama did Dragon Ball and Dragon Quest, so that's kind of why. <laughs> you know, there's always going to be that similarity, because Akira Toriyama designed the characters. Um, so yeah, you kind of get that vibe. But um, apart from that, I think, I want to say it's the most on-topic I've been. Especially when I'm with the gang. When, we're, when, we're, when, when I'm with the gang, we haven't been there for a while, but at least back in the day, when we when we were together, had a lot more time, did a lot more uh, group Let's Plays, then um, we would have, what's the word? We would uh, very rarely be on-topic. <laughs> Like, if you see me doing something on screen, because normally he's playing, and everyone else is just making bad jokes and such. I had talk, we did have a good talk about Pokemon yesterday. That's true, that's true. Um, though you, you missed, I think you, you missed, you missed like an hour of what we were actually talking about before that, at least, which was not Pokemon related at all. <laughs> I think I was talking about Crash and Spyro. I think that's what I was talking about. Um, before you, before you turned up yesterday. And then, uh, anyway, and I kind of went on to Pokemon, the anime and stuff. I think I was talking about Crash and stuff, I think, from what I remember. And that's actually what I'm bringing up today. Um, looks like somewhere, some, uh, foreign shop, well... Uh, some Brazilian shop, I think, uh, has basically leaked the uh, Xbox version of Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't really care because it's like, well, I've already played the Insane Trilogy. I know what's in the game. What is What else is there to see? Well, what's leaked on the box is what's actually different to the original. Now, this seems legit, and apparently it is, but I still, I'm, I'm always still hesitant when people post things. I'm like, do I trust this source? Um, but from the looks of it, we are getting a new DLC level for Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. And if this is true, if this is true, this is going to be... Nothing to do with uh, any levels before. This is apparently going to be a completely unique level that I guess they're creating. Um, I think like it was called Future Something from what I read. Future Tense. Future Tense. So apparently we might be getting a Future Tense level, which I guess is going to be kind of like, you know, uh, Future Frenzy, I guess. If this is true. If this is true. So we might be getting a new DLC level. And I all of a sudden have a... Oh, all of a sudden I have a headache. Okay. They just hate it when a headache just kind of springs onto you. Oh, I hope it goes away soon. That's annoying. Uh, maybe I haven't drunk enough water. To be fair, I've not drunk water today. I've only drunk I've only drunk tea. It's all I've had. I've had tea, and now I'm drinking coke, and that's probably not the best thing to drink. <laughs> so I may have to get a, I may have to go get some water on standby. Standby. Standboy. Standboy. Yeah, there you go. I've been watching too many people play God of War, and the interesting thing about God of War, well, well it's like interesting about watching other people play the same game is that not everyone's the same. Everyone has different play styles and different personalities. You know what I mean? Like I watch someone who's a little bit more into the series, who's just all about the series. Then I've got someone who's talking about um, like the uh, um, like the, the the history of that realm um, of God of War is in a different realm, it's in the Norse, Norse realm. Um, and, then, and then you have somebody who's just really bad at the game, but, but you know, just goes in and just has a very, you know, jokeable type of personality. And it's more of the personality, I suppose, than, than them being good at the game. And trolling, I guess, you know. But um, I don't know, I've just been watching a lot of that, and it just makes me want to buy it more. Uh, Dad of Boy, so. Crash Panic Battle Royale. That's what I was, I was actually, you say that, for this. I was talking about, because I mentioned Crash Bash, and I said, like, that game, that game is fun, playing with your friends, but I feel like the single campaign mode is just not that good. Um, especially if you want to go for the full game, which I've never done, which is 200%. It is a pain. I've never done it. I just don't have the patience for it. it. It gets way too frustrating. But what I was saying is that I'm surprised they haven't done a Crash Bash type game that includes Spyro in it. Like a Crash Spyro type thing. Or like I said, I said, um, kind of, sort of like how Mario and Sonic have that whole, like, Olympic Games crossover. I'm surprised they haven't done, like, a Crash Spyro mini game thing, you know. 
I don't know what you'd call that, but... I don't know. I'm kind of surprised they haven't done it. Considering Activision owns the same thing, maybe they're afraid not to do it. You know, because because fans because fans will get triggered. Speaking of speaking of fans as far, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> since since uh since I can't bother to deal with people on Twitter, I'm gonna rant here instead. Well, I wouldn't say rant, but I'm gonna get my two cents here. <laughs> so basically, you guys are kind of, you're kind of screwed. Uh, it will just turn me off. That's the best thing to do. <laughs> just don't leave. Just turn me off. <laughs> Mute. Oh no, he's gonna rant. Mute. I don't want to know. Go away. Uh, but yeah, I, I had some I had some fun times playing Crash Bash for sure. Um, Especially with my friends, we had a lot of laughs. I think my favorite level from Crash Bash was the Space Bash level, which ironically, funny enough, we were talking about Future Frenzy, was basically the Future Frenzy level. And the reason why I loved it so much, it was, uh, it was the one we have to like pick up crates and frame each other. The reason why I loved it so much was because it was the only level that you could blow up the floor. And the thing that made me laugh is that the AI was kind of stupid. And sometimes the AI would literally just walk into a pit. It was the hilarious thing. Or if you're like someone like Crash, what I used to do a lot is I used to just spin all TNTs everywhere, and I would always hit the opponent, but then it would cause a hole and it would fall into it. And it was just a hilarious thing. Like, it really is. And then I remember, like, when I was playing with my friend Leon, um, sometimes it'd be, like, down to me and him. Like, I'd be crashing into Cortex. And we'd basically have, like, a spin-slash-gun war where Cortex would try to zap me. I would try to spin into him. We'd try to knock each other into the holes. Like, I had so much fun playing that game with my friends. But the campaign mode is... Oh, it is rage. Is it the dark... Like, before, before Crash the Titans, or Mind of the Mutant, we had Crash Bash. <laughs> you know? We had the Crash Bash um, campaign mode. I'd still say it was better than, than Crash the Titans, and I have no opinion of Mind of the Mutant, so I played that game. But, um... But yeah, the campaign mode is just like, ugh. But I'm surprised they haven't even, like, even if they did like a Spyro one, I'm surprised they haven't done a Spyro, I said a Spyro racing game. A Spyro racing game. You know? Oh, Spyro racing game. Speaking of Spyro racing game, I'm well, speaking of racing games in general, also, hey, hello, Jacob. Um, I didn't want, uh, didn't want you think I was ignoring you. Um, the grind is real, my, my friend. The grind is real. It's not the worst grind I've ever done. Um, like I say, Digimon Mod 2003 is definitely up there. That's pretty bad, honestly. Um, the giant polar bear was a hard boss. Throwing bash, he, he's tricky. He's tricky. It's mainly the robot. It's mainly the uh, the mechanical bears um, that are kind of irritating. But he went too bad. Oxide is the hardest boss, and he well, I mean, he's the final boss. So it goes without saying. But to be fair, most of the like like Puppy Puppy was fine. Um, the giant polar bear was a little tricky. The Komodo brothers in the tanks was kind of annoying, and Oxide is just like, Ugh. <laughs> that's a pain. But um, yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the campaign. Uh, you know, you can play the campaign with two players though. I think me and my friend used to try and do that back in the day. I think we did beat Oxide, but we just gave up after that. Like, we did not want to play anymore. But <laughs> we're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> I'm done, okay. <laughs> no more. No more! No more, please! Uh, so yeah. Oh. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But, um, yeah, speaking of, like, racing games, guess what Walmart did? Again, leaking more footage of Team Sonic Racing. Good going, Walmart. Good, 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 good job. Nice. E3 is literally around the corner, and they're Sega are probably going to show the footage off them, but never mind. Like, let's just have, let's just have, you know, places leak things when they shouldn't, but they do it anyway. So, uh, well done, well done, Walmart. Let's give, let's give Walmart, Walmart, I should say, a big round of applause for leaking shit. Well done. Good shit. <laughs> well freaking done. Oh, man. Uh, it, was, it was some gameplay. If, if I were to give my thoughts on it, I'm not going to do a video on it. I was tempted, but I'm like, nah, I ain't doing a video on it. Um, I will probably do a video, like, maybe after E3. I, I chose Thunderwave by accident. Uh, maybe after E3, if they show more footage or official footage or something, then I'll, I might do a video on it or something, but... Nah, I'm not bothered. But, um, to give my brief thoughts on it, it just looks like Sonic All-Stars Racing. Like, gameplay-wise. Um, you know? It, it just it just does. Just with... I, you just didn't see many characters. Um, didn't look like there was many about um, at the moment, but, uh... That's basically what it looked like. Essentially. It wasn't very short. It was, like, 30-second gameplay trailer on Twitter, but it was there. Like, even, like, the flips, like, that you do with the car is basically All-Stars. Like, it's literally exactly the same. So, it's it's basically, in base gameplay, it is All-Stars, but, like, they're just kind of changing things a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, that's, like, the base, you know what I mean? I mean, hey, if it works, it works. And it is the same people who did the All-Stars racing games, so it's kind of fair enough, really. Um, there was, I think there was a car that I did not recognise, with a character that I did not recognise. I don't think it was Sonic, because Sonic was the main character, so it might have been Metal Sonic, I don't know. Not sure. I don't actually know who the 15 characters are. I've only seen Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and maybe a screenshot that kind of looked like it might have been Amy, but not percent sure. She's probably in it. Like, I'd be surprised if she if she isn't. She was in All-Stars. Like, she, she'll be in it. But just, yeah, like, just more leaked footage. Um, but back on the Spyro, I uh, just recently saw, saw, I recently saw some screenshots, which I don't know if they were leaked specifically or whether they were just posted, but it uh, looks like we got some more screenshots of uh, Spyro the Reignite uh, trailer. Tra trailer. Trilogy. Trailer. I said that before. Um, on Twitter. So that's the thing, when E3 comes around, there's always lots of posts and stuff about, you know, games obviously and whatnot on Twitter. And, like, before E3 even comes around, there are leaks, it happens. It's annoying, but, you know, it's just kind of like expected, I suppose. Um, it's just one of these things. But, um, 
this goes on to what I'm talking about with, with, with fan bases and people complaining and, and, and maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I am, maybe I'm a hypocrite, I don't know, but like, let's talk about the Insane Trilogy for a minute, right? The Insane Trilogy is a really, really good attempt at recreating the three first Crash Bandicoot games on the PlayStation 1. For the most part, they tried to keep it almost accurate, you know, because if they weren't, then they wouldn't be, you know, the games. They would be brand new games that are kind of like them, but not them. So it looks like, from what people are saying, from what I've seen, Spyro might be going off a little bit in a different direction. To the point where people are like, okay, you guys are doing too much. This isn't Spyro anymore. Um, stop, basically. Like, stop or change things. Now, I guess the good thing is that I think I said before on Twitter that uh, when I looked at the recent trailer, kind of trailer, but footage of Stone Hill, I looked at it and then I looked back at an old screenshot and realized that they actually had changed the coloring of Stone Hill. Um, when I look back at it, I guess I would say that now it looks more like Stone Hill um, and it looked a little bit more yellow in the previous screenshot, right? Um, so I guess Toys for Bobs, who are the ones who are making it, they're listening. They are listening. But at the same time, what annoys me is that I feel like people just complain too much. Too much. They're, We'll have reasons to complain, like if the game plays badly, alright, fair enough, the game is bad, fair enough. If the game is, you know, so far off from what it's actually trying to be, like if if the, if the Reignited Trilogy ends up being too different than the original, when the whole goal is to basically redo the originals in a way, but like how they interpret it, I guess, but you know, trying to keep it kind of like the insane trilogy where it's pretty accurate, but it's not, then okay. But I feel like when someone sees something like a slight design change, uh, people are like, oh my god, this is crap, what is wrong with you, you need to change it, and it's like, come on, man. Do you really need to be that nitpicky? I don't know. It's To me, it's as bad as when people complained about Sky Sanctuary and Sonic Generations. You know what they said? They said it's not yellow enough. Because Sky Sanctuary is kind of more of a more of a peachy white, I would say, than yellow. And I noticed that, but I wasn't like, oh my god, Sky Sanctuary's not yellow enough. I was like, it looks fine. I don't really care. It's not a big deal to me. I don't know. You know, it's just like, mm. I just feel like there are just I just feel like there's just certain things that people just take a little too seriously. It's like, it doesn't matter too much. Again, if, if it is a big difference, so like a big change, then... And, you know, and a big change to the point where it's not showing what they're expecting to deliver. Then fair enough. But when it's just little, little, tiny little things, we nitpick too much in general. Like, I would, I'd probably say I'm guilty of that as well. Like, and I'm trying not to be, honestly. Um, you know, let's step back into the realm when we were kids, right? Where we didn't really care, or we didn't really see the faults so much as games. But now we've gotten older, we just kind of sound like old men. Moaning. You know? We are, well, you don't even have to be British these days to moan, obviously. But, like, I always make the joke that British people are miserable, right? Including myself. But it's like, well, there's more than the world in England, right? And there are a lot of people on the internet, and there are a lot of people that complain. And I, like I, said, I feel like we complain too much, we really do. Um, and we nitpick every little thing. And sometimes I just think, can you enjoy the game? And if you can't enjoy the game, this, this was someone's argument. Um, and I know some people would trigger to this, but like, don't buy the game. Which, to be honest, as much as someone might not like that response, it's the truth at the end of the day. You know? My friend Leon, he doesn't understand so much like why he should be interested in the new Spyro Remaster because he has all three games. Because to him, it's like, well, it's cool and neat that they're doing an HD remaster, but to him, it's just like, well, the originals are fine. He has the originals, so to him, there's no point for him to buy it and play it. Which is fair enough. I can see that, you know? I can see that from his point of view. Obviously, if you've never played these original Spyro games, then you can kind of use this excuse, I guess, to try this HD version in a way, this remaster, and get the experience that way. Um, because it can be harder to get the original copies. Uh, fun to wait again. Um, you know, so it really depends. It's like per person per person, but like, you know, there were some new screenshots and it she it she like another nork, and someone immediately was just like, "What the hell is this screenshot?" And someone was like, "It's a nork," and they're like, "This ain't a lemon nork." Obviously, meaning you know, it's too different from the original, so this is like a crap. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I was tempted to reply to this person. I was like, you know what? I can't be asked to get into some stupid internet war. Like, you know, sod it. <laughs> if they want to think that way, that's fine. Like, you know. Again, I'll, I'll give my opinion on the game when it comes out. Like my honest opinion of the game, but at the end of the day, it's just kind of like, well, they haven't finished the game yet, and they're still, and they're open to criticism, so it's just kind of like, they, you know, everything could change completely by the time the game comes out. It's not September yet, you know, it's still got a few months left. Things do change a lot, they do. Like if you see any beta of a game and you see what things they had planned and they didn't do, yeah, like things change, man. Oh wow, no one was about me. Anyway, I think, <laughs> I think that's quite, kind of rent, kind of a rent, kind of not really, I'm just, it's just like, yeah, well, you know, that's the internet for you. Really? <laughs> that's all I can really say at the end of the day. Oh, I keep clicking on Thunderwave. You know what, I need to, I need to reorganize the moves, because I think I can do that. I think I can move the moves about if I remember correctly. I could do well. I'm going to try it real quick. I did a lot. Um, is there a button? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Put Thunderbolt there. That way, even if I accidentally press the X button, uh, not the X button, the A button, um, 
don't have to worry about it. That's a handy little feature, I suppose. You can uh, move, you can put the moves wherever you want. You can, you can move them about and stuff. Okay, Sparks is nearly level uh, 55. Nearly. He's getting there. Slowly but surely, but he's getting there. The up E3 is literally around the corner. I think it is next week. I could be wrong, but... Whoop. Must cost a hell of a lot to go to E3. Unless you get invited, I suppose. And I, you know what? I never even thought about going to E3. I know some people are like, oh my god, it's the big event, so... But I hear it costs like a lot of money. And personally, I'm totally fine with just sitting in my own home watching it, if I want to watch it, you know. Which I don't always watch E3. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think it also just kind of depends on if I'm looking the right mood for it type of thing. <clears throat> I guess. Primate is getting pumped. Well, it doesn't really matter what Primate is getting because he's about to uh, kick the bucket. There you go. He's about to kick the bucket. What about you guys? Anything? Is there anything you're hoping to see in E3? Anything you are uh, looking forward to? Anything you're not looking forward to? <laughs> like EA? <laughs> for me, it's kind of like EA and Microsoft. I don't really, I don't really care too much for them, to be honest. But I don't, even, I don't have a Microsoft console. I mean, if it's indie games, like I have Steam, so that's fine. But I mean, I, I mainly look out for Sony and Nintendo. That's it. Yeah, you know. they're the ones that matter. <laughs> not really, since I don't buy any of the games. You know what? So at least that's exactly what Mark said to me when I saw him. Uh, last Sunday, because we were talking briefly about games, and he was like, "Yeah, he don't care about E3 because new games just don't interest him anymore." And I said, "That's fair enough." You know what? That's that. That is a big. That's like a big problem, I suppose, with us is that we are so much in the old gen era. You know, I don't know. That's a big reason why our channel hasn't been doing like has never done well. Is because we don't do anything different or interesting, and we play a lot of old games. And it's like, well, everyone's played old games, right? Um, and even now, like I still play more old than new. Um, you know. But that's not what people want to see, but that's just where I am. I am I am an old gen person, you know. I am stuck in the Sony PlayStation's era slash kind of Sega era, you know. I am I'm am, I'm am still kind of stuck in the, the mid to late nineties era. That that is where my games are like my games you know, the games I prefer like. And unfortunately, as well as as well as you know, as well as playing games that no that not many people really care too much about, because well, I mean, for those who do care about, they have people that they're already subscribed to on YouTube, you know, or follow on Twitch. So it's like, well, if they've already got someone they want to watch there. They probably less likely to be interested in watching anyone else. You know what I mean. Basically, the people who are already big are playing, are already playing your games, already big, so it's fine for them. But for someone like us, who's never been big, it's always going to be a struggle. And unfortunately, again, I'm kind of in the same boat as Mark. Honestly, like there are some new games that interest me, but when I think about it, a lot of the new games are remasters. So can I really say that you know I play mo modern games when? I'm like, yeah, I play Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy, which is just Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3 on the PS1, and now I'm looking forward to Spyro. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, even though it's just Spyro again, it's just kind of like, well, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like, hmm, when I think about it, I'm still stuck in that era. You know, like, modern games, most most modern games, most modern games just don't interest me. But I will say one thing, I will say one thing, same with Sonic Mania, really, in a way, I will say one thing. You know, um, I am grateful that platforms are coming back, because, you know, new games such as, like, you know, Cuphead, A Hat in Time, are games that I'm interested in. You know, they might they might be like like old and like maybe like old star 3D platform or 2D platform or whatever, but they're still released now. So, you know, at least at least at least I've got that I suppose. At least I've got that I suppose. But but yeah, when you when you're not really interested in new games, it's kind of like mm, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like mm. which is another reason why I don't watch many people on Twitch or YouTube because well, everyone's playing new games that I don't care for, or obviously Fortnite or whatever the most popular game is. Um, you know, there are some people playing retro games, but most of the time. Whenever I try to search for other people playing like specifically specific games and stuff, I either can't find them or they're in a different language, <laughs> but they're not English, you know. So I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> there's no point. There's no, there's no point me. There's no point me watching someone who won't understand them. So it's just kind of like it's a shame. I, I wish there were more people, but I get it. Those people just want the views. I get it. Like I can't. I can't even blame people. I get it. You got to do what you got to do, right, to get up on the ladder. I, I understand. Or you know, just more people are playing more modern games because they prefer modern games. Fair enough. You know, fair enough. At the end of the day. And I think partly my issue is that, well, I don't know, I'm broke. <laughs> so if I had money, I probably would be buying maybe some like more indie games and stuff. Because um, there are games I want to try out eventually. 
So that that is also an issue, <laughs> a kind of a big one, you know. <laughs> so hurry up and, and hurry up and get a bloody job. That would be nice. Oh man, do not do not get me started on 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 people on Patreon. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> Which I will just say to end off, I have nothing against people using Patreon. That's all I'll say. That is not why I'm annoyed about about it. But yeah, everyone playing Fortnite for him. Yeah, to me it is. Jamie likes it. <laughs> Jamie likes it. Jamie's been playing it and he likes it. So I, 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 I fair enough, you know. Really, out of out of like me and my group of friends, I would say Jamie's like the one who just plays a lot of everything. He mainly, he's mainly a PC gamer though, so he does. He has like so many. He even said to me, I think that he now has over four thousand games on Steam. Because last time I think I asked him, he said he had a thousand. Now he has four thousand. Like Jesus Christ, I barely have twenty. <laughs> I, I barely have twenty. I barely have twenty, mate. Crazy. But yeah, like compared to compared to like me and Mark, who don't really play games anymore, and neither does Leon. Like he's the one who plays more games than us, I think. At least more modern games, you know. I mean, I'll just say it right now, but there's a good chance, right, that the next game after this won't be a modern game. Well, that and because I don't really have any modern games. <laughs> you know. Oh. Okay, you came through. No, you don't have to do that, mate. I won't, I won't worry. I mean, if I really wanted, if I really wanted like a game for my birthday, I know my parents would probably buy me one or give me money for it. But like, you know, no, no. I just need a bit more luck when it comes to you know finding a, a job. At least the job that isn't customer service, you know. Just, just hope, just hoping for luck to come into my favor. You know, that's what it is. Get back into work and you know start earning my way again. Would be nice. Just gotta keep trying. Gotta keep pressing on. In the meantime, streams, <laughs> videos, recordings, you know, that's what I do. When I'm not looking for work, I ain't got much else to do, so this is what I do. I spend my time putting effort into the channel for you guys, because I still enjoy it, you know. And I still need to do the bloody Sonic R review. I'm getting there. The script is almost done. I mean, it is done, but, like, I have to rewrite it, and it's, all, it's almost been rewritten, and then I just gotta, like, record a couple of things here and there, and then edit the video, but I meant to do that ages ago. I need to get to it. I'm getting there, slowly. Oh, I just realized, Spikes on 55. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll get him to level 60 anyway at some point. Um, probably. Uh, okay, so... Do I want to do this? Hmm. Hmm. Trunk is the only one that I'm unsure about. Because I bet you anything, I'll probably be Sparks and Ben. And maybe Hibs. Maybe Godzilla, I don't know. Switch it out and stuff. Oh, I got the rival as well, but, um, actually, I'll tell you what, um, give me a sec. I should have really done this earlier, but I was kind of busy doing something else. Behind the scenes of Game Busters UK. It's like everyone's streaming today. Well, I mean, not today, but, like, around the time that I'm streaming. Um, let me have a quick look. Uh, check the levels of the Elite Four. Um, oh yeah, that was that, that was that Pokemon Box game, by the way, guys. Pokemon Quest. That's what it's actually called. I call it Pokemon Box. I think my name is better. Mmm. <laughs> Nintendo hire me. Nah, I wouldn't even. <laughs> that depends, man. I don't know how well they treat their staff. <laughs> um, uh, Leap 4, there we go. So I'll check the levels. I might as well check the, uh, the hero as well. Wait, so the, wait, the first opponent is Lorelei? I thought it was... I thought it was, uh... Oh, okay. I thought it was, uh... Oh, God. Wait, what? I thought it was, um... Bruno. I guess, I, I assume this is in order. I assume. Well, either way. Uh, right, so Lorelei's levels are 50, 51 to 54. Got it. They're all ice and water for the most part. So yeah. Also, they. I think they all have at least one, like, full restore or something like that, so. Oh. Hmm. Wait, is Rock strong against Ice? Hmm. I don't think it was. Oh, Bruno has fighting types as well. Ah. Okay. Bruno's 50 to 50, 56. Got it. I did. Agatha is the somewhat tricky one, because I don't really have a counter for her. Oh, yeah, she's got Gengar level 58. That's not good. Um. And then Lance with all of his dragon types. With Dragon Knight being level 60, yeah, Dragon that's going to be the most difficult one. And then 